The government is planning to introduce new powers to monitor young people suspected of carrying knives in England and Wales. The proposed knife crime prevention orders would allow police to impose curfews, send those caught with knives to educational courses and in some cases restrict their social media use. Our Home Affairs correspondent Dominic Casciani has this report. Police rushing to a young man's aid. This was the scene in an ordinary North London street on Tuesday. Neither they nor paramedics could save 17-year-old Nadim Bilgin, stabbed to death in the street. His father said his wonderful son had gone out on his bike and never come home. The eighth killing so far this year in London. Detectives are interviewing teenaged suspects. And now ministers are asking Parliament to create a new power to take more knives off the streets. The proposed knife crime prevention orders will target suspects based solely on detective suspicions that they're involved in knife crime. Courts will be able to ban suspects from social media used to whip up gang tensions. They'll be able to impose curfews and bar meetings with other suspects. And the suspect could be forced to sit anti-knife crime courses to change their behaviour. The Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, meeting police in South London last night, said he'd listened to their concerns. I want to make sure that we are doing everything we can to stop some of this senseless violence that is taking place on our streets, traumatising so many communities and ending too many young lives. And that means making sure, first of all, police have resources, and we're increasing that, making sure also they have the powers that they need, and this is a new power. This confrontation with a so-called zombie knife led to the attacker being jailed yesterday for three and a half years just one of the 40,000 knife crimes that led to a rise in violent crime last year. Critics say that if ministers really want to stop crimes like this, they need to go back to basics and find the cash for more police on patrol. Dominic Casciani, BBC News. And I'm joined now by Lorraine Jones, who's a pastor and a director of Dwaynamics, a scheme to help young people develop life skills through boxing, mentoring and employability workshops. Well, Lorraine's son, Dwayne Simpson, was fatally stabbed in Brixton in 2014 at the age of 20. He'd started a boxing club and Lorraine relaunched it to honour her son's memory and to try to inspire youngsters who might otherwise become involved in gang culture. Well, thank you very much indeed for coming and talking to us. Um, just tell us, first of all, what you make of this new initiative from the Home Secretary. It's very disheartening. Um, We've had so many meetings with our mayor, with the council. I know the government have been involved and we have come up with a brilliant plan. They're now saying the public health approach. But yet the resources to facilitate such a program to help deal with the harsh situation we're in has not been honoured in terms of centres where we can work with our children and support to the centres like myself that are working tirelessly. It seems to be a lot of concentration on the police. The police are doing the best they can. They are overworked. And I read in the report the extension of their responsibility in monitoring social media in terms of violent acts or things that may portray for them to carry out gang warfare. How will these police be able to monitor such when they're just about managing the 999 calls? You mentioned that I'm a, a community pastor, I am. So I'm not just working with young people, I'm working with parents and families. And it's not just youth violence, but it's violent crime altogether. It's, it's absolutely terrible, Carol. Uh, and Lorraine, what the government is saying is that the idea of these curfews, these orders that could be imposed, is to try to catch young people before they get locked into a path of violence. It's not about catching them before they get locked into the path of violence. It's about engaging with these children. We have to remember that they are children. We have the education system that has been set up to work with children from as young as five years old. So we have these establishments, but what is lacking is the 
workers, the support workers, the workers that can intervene in dealing with the various challenges our children now have as a result of poor social management. Like I said, Carol, there are hardly any community centres. So our children are fairly safe in school. They're there to learn their education. But when they come out, where are they going to? They're vulnerable and it's not the police's job to catch them. It's our job to be able to engage with them in a civilised, humane manner. You've obviously been through the dreadful experience of losing your own son. You're now working very closely with young people who are in danger of getting caught up in some of the violence that we've seen. Do you think that the government needs to do more to tap into the sorts of experiences, uh, the sort of understanding which charities like yours have? Do I think? I know. It's heartbreaking. Sajid needs to really take some time out of Parliament, out of these meetings. Take a leaf out of David Cohen's book. Come and live with us in our estates. Experience what we're experiencing. Take some time to stay in the pupil referral units where these children are having to cope with the challenges there. Have some time at King's College Hospital. Watch what they have to deal with at the trauma unit. I had to go through that, Carol. Dwayne was stabbed. He was on the life support machine for two days. All I could do to Dwayne is kiss his forehead and his feet. He was swollen beyond recognition because he got stabbed through the heart. That's why I'm so passionate. It seems that the government are totally lost with the reality of the scale of urgency we're living. Okay, Lorraine Jones, thank you very much indeed for joining us and talking to us about this issue. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Carol.